Okay, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at how the surround panners work in Pro Tools. So again, this is assuming that you have Pro Tools HD uh, software, um, either with or without Pro Tools HD hardware. Okay, so here you can see I've got a mono track with a surround panner assigned. And uh, the track is routed to um, a 5.1 destination. So as we previously mentioned, um, it's pretty straightforward just to move the little hockey puck around and I can go to, you know, front left, center, front right. I can go directly into one of the surrounds and all that good stuff. So that, that's pretty straightforward. And the position controls here, you can see, will just sort of track the movement of the little puck as it moves around. Um, but actually, it's it's pretty common to use these controls for automation just because then you can really just look at one parameter when you're making an automation move. So if you're moving across the front, you can just move that front control. You can move the front to rear control. And if you're moving across the rear, you can use the rear control. Now you'll notice this little line that comes up. And that happens when the front position and the rear position are different. And what it allows you to do is use just the front to rear position to make a diagonal pan um, across the 5.1 outputs. Something that, you know, normally would be pretty difficult to do without a joystick or something like that. Now what you also see in here is the center percentage. And what that does is it takes a signal out of the center channel, which is something quite useful, um, especially in post-production mixing. But even in music, if you have an element that you want to take out of the center channel uh, partially or completely, but leave it panned center, you can just turn that center percentage number down and you can see the speaker kind of fades out. Um, if I take it all the way down, then I'm only going to hear that element in the left and right speakers and I won't get it in the center at all. Then that brings us to divergence, which we've briefly talked about in a previous video. Um, if I'm panned, for example, directly in front of the center channel, and I reduce the divergence, what happens is rather than just appearing in the center channel output, you can see that the levels will start to come up in the left and the right. And in fact, if I bring the divergence all the way down, then the signal will be equal across the front three speakers. Okay, so that's a way to diffuse a sound uh, and sort of decentralize it <laughs> uh, from the speaker that it happens to currently be assigned to. Okay, so we also have a rear divergence control, which isn't that common to use. Um, if you have a rear center channel, like you would in some 6.1 configurations, then obviously that could be useful. Um, but again, what, what it could be used for, if you have something that's panned slightly to the rear left, uh, you could reduce the rear divergence and you would actually get more of that in the rear right. And you can see how this little shape sort of changes to reflect that. Okay, so that would be rear divergence. And then the front to rear, let's say I go back to the center channel up here, I can spread the signal from the front to the rear by reducing that divergence amount. Okay, so that's basically what divergence does. The only other control in here that's really worth looking at is the LFE, uh, which of course allows me to send some of the signal directly to the subwoofer. That's something to be careful with because the signal will go directly to the sub. That's going to be combined with all of the bass from the main speakers that's being sent to the subwoofer by the listener's bass management system. So you definitely want to be careful with that. Okay, so one last thing we'll look at here is what these panners look like on a stereo track. So I'll bring those up. And all of the controls are basically the same between the left and the right. Um, but there are some linking controls up here in the right that are worth looking at. So you have a global linking button here. Uh, and so then if I turn that off and I move this right panner, you'll notice that the left doesn't move. If I link them again, then they move together. Then these three right here actually invert the linkage. So if I were to uh, turn those off, then you'll see I'll move this panner to the left. And now they'll actually be just aligned. Um, even though these are left and right channels of information, they'd be going to the same output destination. So that's not something that you would typically use. So I'll turn on the inverse pan in the front and I'll go ahead and bring my uh, little hockey puck back over there. And now you'll see that across the front channels, they're inverted, which is pretty typically the way you want to work. If I invert the rear, then you'll see if we come down to the rear channels, they're inverted back there. And if I invert front to rear and I place this panner at the rear right, 
then they'll be inverted that way as well, which is which is pretty uncommon. Uh, so so typically you leave the left or right front panning and the left or right rear panning inverted. That way the linkage between the left and right channels is pretty logical. Okay, so that's pretty much it for surround panning in Pro Tools.